Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Wednesday, January 17th, 11.35 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Grand Solar Minimum Update. You're looking at the Northern Hemisphere snow and ice extent. Thanks to albedo, 96% of the planet that has land is covered in snow north of 45, including almost 80% of Eastern Europe, all of Russia, in almost all of eastern North America, look at all these southern states covered in snow today. That's a big boom. Look at the ice extent in the Arctic. We'll get to that later. At least 10 deaths from snow, ice, and record cold in the south. That's unfortunate. Coming from the AP, snow, ice, and record-breaking blast of cold closed runways, highways, schools, and government offices across the south and sent cars sliding off roads Wednesday in a corner of the country, ill-equipped to deal with the wintry weather. At least 10 people died, including a baby in a car that plunged off a slippery overpass into a Louisiana canal. And that's a baby boom. What's going on? Hundreds of flights canceled as record-breaking cold hits the U.S. South. Winter weather advisories were in effect from northeast to the mid-Atlantic states and southeast, as well as over the central Gulf Coast of Texas, according to the National Weather Service. More than 360 outgoing flights at Atlanta's Hartsfelt-Jackson International Airport were canceled or delayed on Wednesday, according to FlightWare.com. Another 60-plus were canceled or delayed at Raleigh Dorham International Airport. The governors of Georgia, North Carolina, and Louisiana declared a holy crap what is going on emergency due to the weather conditions, which caused multiple car accidents during rush hour traffic because idiots are driving around. And that's a super boom because 71.2 million are under winter weather alerts. Hard freeze continues in portions of the deep south. It's not over. The fourth winter storm to impact the U.S. is only less than halfway there. Six more to come. This one has a sexy name, Inga, by the Weather Channel, moved into the region Tuesday and is still here. Moving up into Halifax as we speak, causing major travel problems and forcing officials to declare states of emergency in North Carolina and Alabama. 71.2 million people are under winter weather alerts Wednesday as Inga moves through the southeast and into the northeast. Heads up, heads up. Look at the pictures coming from Tennessee. They're not too happy down there. This is the AMHQ big picture. So let's make the picture big. You can see the front. Snow all the way down here into South Carolina, New Georgia, through Tennessee, and this is where it is right now. Three to five up in Bangor. New York just got a dusting. That is the cold behind it. Minus 13 in Bismarck, minus 5 Chicago, minus 13 Kansas City, minus 7 St. Louis, 2 in Cincy. Ben Davidson happy he moved out of Ohio. Minus 10 in Sioux Falls. Are you Sioux Falls kidding? What's going on? Check out the GFS model as we pull it. Watch this Arctic air bubble go boom, way down south. This is January 17th today, and there it is pushing through tomorrow morning. And that is just the beginning. This cold front is going to dump tons of snow out west, and it's going to move slightly east. Look what happens at the end of the month in a week from now. The same pattern develops on the 30th of January. Guys, when you see this light purple, it means it's 25 degrees below normal. In Tennessee, once again. That's a heads up to Tennessee and Tallahassee for the third snow event out of five this year. And that's a grand solar minimum baby boom. And if you don't know what's going on, it's right here in the graphic. This is coming from the Satire TS I've data set to today at the arrow. Today current and you can see our total solar irradiance as just above 1360.5 which it hasn't been since 1904 
during the centennial minimum. And over the next two years, TSI is going to drop down to a level that's not on this graphic. It's on this one, the historical sunspot graphic, because if it's lower than the centennial minimum, it has to be dropping down to the Dalton minimum. And we're going to get to that in the eruption of Tambora. And that's a boom, an extreme boom. Extreme weather closes Swiss roads and rail lines. Heads up, Swiss Alps, for avalanche warnings. By tomorrow, high winds from the latest weather storm hit Switzerland, have knocked down trees and blocked roads and rail lines. What a sexy shot. The winds from Storm Evie, oh, they're naming them in Europe. Guys, reach speeds of 101 miles per hour. That's 161 kilometers per hour for you Euros. Degrees Celsius Fahrenheit nonsense. This video from Swiss Public Television shows the winds whipped up the waters of Lake Zug. Look at these waves on the lake. Winter storm every fucking boot and holy shit and mining waving burden flying away and and that's a heads up. Philippines, thousands flee as volcano readies to blow. This is Mayan. The historic uh, Grand Solar Minimum, Dalton Minimum volcano that blew in 1814. Coming from other sources, also in 1841, killing 1,200 people. Now, this isn't the one we should be worried about, although it gave us that last two days of awesome uh, lava fountain shots. We should be worried about Cadavar Volcano, which remains dynamic, says the PNG Observatory. The Rabul Volcanic Observatory in Papua New Guinea says the eruption of Cadavar Island remains dynamic. All this vegetation is now gone, guys. It's an old photo from days ago. Now, the seismic activity beneath uh, Cadavar could mean that a major eruption is imminent, according to volcanologists and according to Diamond in the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Lowering the temperature of the planet up to 1.5 degrees C, depending on the ferocity of the explosive eruption. More than 9,000 people have been evacuated from the surrounding area, including Beam Island, thankfully. Steve Saunders, Principal Geodetic Surveyor at the Rabul Vo uh, Volcanic Observatory in Papua New Guinea in the last 48 hours, said seismic activity had recently increased. And the reason we're getting activity is probably because new magma is moving up from the deeper down. Saunders told Australian Broadcasting Corporation. So the, the complete evacuations cannot be confirmed. And this baby is could be blowing. Let's talk about Turialba vol Volcano in Costa Rica, which woke up on January 15th at 4.11 a.m. The cameras were on. And if you guys love the electric universe, wait until you see this footage. Sickening, lightning, emanating. This is an electric universe we live in. And this is an electric volcano. Interacting with the currents that are flowing in the subsurface of the planet that Nikola Tesla knew well about. Free energy for all up in the ionosphere. Being demonstrated, the electric universe here by this volcano in Costa Rica. So if you guys are planning on going to Costa Rica for the grand solar minimum, then and you hopefully you like fireworks. And that's a boom. <laughs> That's a super baby boom. Super boom. Baby boom. Boom boom. So that's a heads up. That volcano might blow, and this one is blowing. Turialba volcano in Costa Rica. That electricity might have something to do with the telluric currents in the large 7.1 that got shot off there recently in the Caribbean fault zone, interacting with that volcano in ways that our scientists can't fathom because it would hurt their head. The rest of the worldwide volcano news update here. We have a new one to the list. Karminsky, which must be Russian. Fuego, Popoca, Tapeto, Sinabong, Sabancayo, Cadavar. Oh, why are all, we have like dozens of volcanoes in the last five days going off. What's going on? Let's go over to space weather. Look at the cosmic rays entering our planet 
over the last day and a half. These are cosmic ray perturbations to the discover solar wind at the surface of the Earth. Putting us at KP0, which is going to give us some seismic uptick. Heads up, blowing off. I'm sure you're rattled over there in the West Coast. Happening while we're making the video here. 4.2 in the geysers. That's on land. There are people all over there shitting their pants because they're waiting for the big slip. There's an aftershock. This is crazy. I love reporting on geologic phenomena that has to do with space weather when we're actually doing the right science. Look at the KP at zero, folks. Look at the perturbations to all of the dynamic instruments, the density. Here we have solar wind speed being perturbed by cosmic ray flux. The temperature also. The result, volcanic uptick. And we've got one volcano in particular. Oh, look at that right there erupting. Wow, I love live coverage. Boom! Baby boom! Extreme weather, the biggest global threat facing humanity. This is coming out all over, all over major sources, all over the world. And this is a great headline because this is actually going to save lives. Because extreme weather is the biggest global threat facing humanity. They might think it's global warming, but it doesn't matter if these people think it's global warming or climate change. As long as they know is that there's going to be extreme fluctuations in the weather causing crop loss, famine, global unrest, starvation. Then those two can start preparing for what's coming in the Eddy Minimum. Now, the bright fireball we reported on last night, the first news resource in the world to have coverage like we did, has made headlines across the globe. It exploded over Michigan. It registered a 2.0 earthquake due to the sonic boom from the reentry of this object, which is clearly a meteorite. And I'm sure people are going to find fragments of this. They have good trajectory and good visibility, good directionality. Some people in the Grand Rapids area probably got hit in the head. <laughs> but we had the best, the earliest coverage on the planet of this fireball, thanks to the Radical Gardener. If you don't know about her, you should subscribe to her. She was one of our subscribers, and now she has a channel that is totally banging. It's not as banging as the fireball, but it's a pretty good channel. She has a really good perspective from the feminine And I suggest you go over and Google, uh, just search Radical Gardener up in the YouTube box there and you'll easily get her. I'll even leave a link down in the description box for you tonight to go search her channel. Global warming pause may last for 20 more years. Huh. I wonder if they spoke to a paleoclimatologist. An Arctic sea ice has already started to recover. Well, we know that because we look at it on a regular basis here. And there is a whole lot of Arctic sea ice. I'll leave you links to this old article that talks about Professor Judith Curry. Guys, if you're new to our channel, we have dozens of videos from all the leading climatologists in the world that don't think the planet is burning up, but they also think what I think, that there are cyclic climatic events that are predictable. If you use historical documentation, including tree rings, carbon-14, and other proxy data, you can clearly see where we're headed in the future which is now, now is the future, which is why we're seeing what we're seeing. And the next three years are going to be a proxy for the rest of your life. And that is a super boom. The deadliest volcanic eruption in history occurred during the Dalton Minimum. You're looking at Mount Tambora. Now, Cadavar, that tiny little island, may not even exist if it blows up. And there'll just be a hole in the ocean, and the amount of steam that it evaporates will cause the planet to dip. So those of you that are preparing for the same exact thing in the past to happen in the future, that's not going to happen. The cosmic ray flux, the increased muons, 
heating the subsurface magma are not going to cause the same type of dynamic eruption that cools the planet in the same ways as it does as it has in the past. It's going to be a different event, and we're going to witness it. And if it is Cadavar, it's going to be way different than Tambora. Now, Tambora was on land. If Cadavar erupts at this scale in this underneath of the ocean, blowing that whole island into the sky, then the amount of evaporated seawater will be epically different than this eruption, causing the planet to cool five times faster. Now, in 1815, just three years after the New Madrid faulted and changed the direction of the Mississippi during the Dalton Minimum, Mount Tambora erupted in Sumbawa, an island of modern-day Indonesia. So those 42 million people in Indonesia currently are totally screwed because another volcano is going to erupt in the next 20 years, and it could be tomorrow. Now, historians regard this as the volcanic eruption with the deadliest known direct impact, where 100,000 people died in the immediate aftermath. And when the catastrophic eruption in the eddy minimum goes off, or the multiple catastrophic eruptions go off, there will be millions of people that die in the immediate aftermath. I assure you. So, I'm leaving this so you can do your own homework. Guys, my favorite subscriber and one of our uh, partners <coughs> in the Grand Solar Minimum Research is Heinrich Bietenhus, and he's doing the GROW experiment uh, over in Denmark. He just put up a new video called the Danish Winter Garden. He lives in an area that is going to be v that's very similar in climate. All of Denmark is now coated in snow. It's up in Scandinavia, high up in the northern latitudes. And this guy knows how to grow food all, all year. He also knows how to grow medicine. So I want you to come over to his channel. I'm going to leave you links down there. He also has these ancient uh, artifacts in his backyard that he found, these axe heads back from the Stone Age. You've got to watch it. If you like archaeology, check out this, this guy's video. It's awesome. And that's a heads up and a super boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Let's quick look, run down the graphics. <clears throat> this is the current data that we know about the total solar irradiance coming from current satellite data. It's lower than it has been in the centennial minimum, and it's dropping below the Dalton minimum levels. This has nothing to do with the magnetic pole shift. The magnetic pole has nothing to do with climate. The rotational pole has everything to do with climate. So if you're worried about the magnetic pole shift, we're going to do a video on that and we can clarify things. What is happening is the magnetosphere of the Earth during the pole shift is waning, which allows more cosmic rays to enter. And we don't need more cosmic rays to enter because more cosmic rays are going to enter anyway because the sun is shutting down. So it's a double additive effect, and that's a boom. And we clearly have been monitoring cosmic ray flux of epic proportions, which are causing volcanoes to erupt. The uptick is noticeable, and the mainstream is not covering it. Or their numbers would be awesome. Guys, I don't know if you know about Anonymous, but we are Anonymous. In case you haven't heard, this channel is Anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.